Australia and I'm really excited to share this with you guys because Dan this is so cool man I gotta say this is just one of the coolest simplest builds I've seen in a long time and I just love it so Dan is building a ceramic fiberboard J using my plans for a customer of his I believe um, I don't think this is his own personal stove and this is an 8 inch J so, so he's um, used my 8 inch J plans uh, and he's built this wonderful stove around those plans using you know the my basic brick bell construction method um, and I just I you know like we talked about last week I just love that we're getting to where we are building these stoves using simple methods and common materials and very, 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 you know, modular concepts um, that allow us to, you know, once you get the hang of it, like we saw with uh, with with Belgian Gulch's stove last week, you really can just throw these things together in 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 you know a configuration to to meet any space with very little difficulty. And so I'm really happy with uh, to share this with you guys. This is a really cool build. So let's switch over to the photos hopefully I got it working right and we'll get started here so um, I don't know that we have a, a whole lot of photos here but we, we'll, we, we got enough to give us the idea um, so I love this this is so cool so there's so many things to talk about here um, I'll try not to skip over them but what I want you guys to pay attention to is that uh, you know a couple things Dan's done a really good job of prepping the area behind where the stove goes and I think that's really important to pay attention to I get that those questions a lot how much clearance behind the stove what what kind of materials can I put back there you know and my suggestions are always uh, I'd like to see you leave enough clearance that you can always get a hand back there and you can always monitor any spaces that are in between the stove and somewhere else and you can always tell what your temperatures are and you know, know if you have a situation that needs very careful monitoring that that that, that um, merits you being vigilant about, or if it's the kind of thing that it really is never going to get hot. So, first thing Dan's done great here that I can see is he spaced this off the wall a little bit. You can tell by the shadow there. But then most importantly is that it looks like he's replaced whatever was on the wall, if there even was wall sheeting, with hardy backer. It looks like something non-flammable, and it looks like they even have steel studs there. Um, but basically the stove is is well away from any combustibles. I really like that. Now that isn't to say you need to be overly cautious about combustibles. You can certainly build these in wooden homes with normal walls. But if you're building one from scratch and you've got the opportunity, it's a great idea to put non-flammable, non-combustible materials behind your stove on that wall. It also gives you some really great choices for um, surfacing, which you'll see. I, I'm, we're going to go into this more. He ends up with this stove right back up there against the wall. So I think, you know, that's a big part of why he does that. So let's move on with the photos and we'll see what's going on there. And Dan, you know, it's it's like four in the morning for Dan right now. So he doesn't always make it here on uh, when we're doing the show. So Dan, I know you'll probably catch up later and have a bunch of things to correct me on. So I apologize that I can't, you can't speak for yourself here. Um, I'm sure I'm getting some of it wrong. But at any rate, here we go. You can now see it. And I was wrong. He didn't build it back towards the wall. He brought he brought the whole thing in this way. I, so I was incorrect. He does keep it off the back wall the whole time. And what's cool about this that you'll see is that he's gone with a sort of heavy double skin concrete block on the back. Back filled with looks like cob, I'm assuming. It might be concrete, but I think it's probably just cob. Um... And what that does for Dan's build here is it gives him a huge mass, a big heat sink back there, um, which adds just a ton of thermal mass. And as you can tell, it's all, well, we'll see as we go on, but all that part of the stove is basically encapsulated. You don't see it in the finished build. And so that's why he's got these, I think, I assume that's why he's got the nice red brick along the outside. And then for the inside, where he just wanted a lot of, masonry volume a high mass he just used those big cinder blocks full of cob and that in that way was able to modularly build up his mass um yeah like that so 
hopefully we're still broadcast and I'm hopefully I'm just in, uh, enchanting you guys with this awesome build. I haven't seen any comments come through and I'm, I'm hoping that the, which is fine. I hope just, just hoping you guys are catching this cause it's really cool. So as you can see where he's done now, aside from that internal mass, he also has those brick columns stacked up. Those are there to carry the bench tops, right? Cause he's going to need somewhere for the bench tops to go. What I like that Dan has done here is he's recognized that you know what we're going for here is more mass so rather than trying to make those columns small and you know just as just as as thin as they could be and still hold up the vertical he doesn't worry about that he just stacks the bricks thick wise to give himself as much mass as possible down there inside the stove so sometimes i get questions on people looking at my plans and they'll say, why is this little piece of brick sticking out here? Why don't you trim, why didn't you trim that off in the plans? And you know, I don't usually go into the full explanation. Um, and I'm sure they just think it's cause I'm lazy and I'm a poor designer. But the real answer is because those are great places to have extra mass. You know, it's not anywhere that interrupts the flow. So why not leave whatever extra brick you can put in there in there, right? It's more thermal storage. So I really like that with Dan's build here. He's he's built a ton of mass, you know, into this bench just in the supports. Not only that, he's got a ton of surface area with this convoluted shape, right? He's just increased his ISA exponentially. So he's going to get great transfer. He's going to have great storage. I think it's a really, really cool way to go. And it's just another way for you guys to see examples of, you know, the, the kind of things that, I guess what I'm trying to say is it, it's a different, your mind, you, you have to look at things differently, right? Like in a normal building situation, you'd look at bench supports, you'd go, oh, I want to save material. I don't need that much material there. But we have different goals. So it's important to keep that in mind. So here we are seeing more of the build. Now, this is so cool. Dan, I, I think maybe that's Dan there. Um, I hope you don't mind me showing your photo. Um, but here's the build as it progresses. Very, very cool. So that's the bench over there. And what you're seeing over here, this big area here is actually where the core is going to go um, and this is a really neat build and that's actually a pretty traditional rocket stove it's going to be a J in a barrel this is actually a lot like Belgian Gulch's build um, and again remember we're in Australia so it's not a terribly cold climate um, but uh, <laughs> and Tall Shadow says Belgian Gulch keeps bricks hanging out on the outside and calls it art <laughs> I have to say, Tall Shadow, in Belgian Gulch's defense, I absolutely love getting photos from Belgian Gulch because his build aesthetic is much like mine, which which is just, let's just get it on fire. I don't really care too much how it looks. I mean, I want it to look nice. And I'm not picking on you, Belgian Gulch. It looks beautiful. I just mean, we're sort of function over form, guys. We, we get it burning, and then we'll worry about making it pretty later, um, I think. But uh, not that yours isn't pretty. It's very pretty. Um, and Tall Shadow just has a pile of loose bricks right now, so I don't know what he's talking about. So um, going on, moving on to uh, to Dan's build here. Here we see more of the build. Obviously, just simple stuff. Simple brick and mortar build. Some cinder blocks to fill up some space. Love it, you guys. Are, are we getting a pattern here, right? These modular builds, these, um, these, these builds using these simple concepts of brick boxes, clay sand mortar, ceramic fiberboard cores we're getting there we're getting to something something that we can really share with people and have them be successful <clears throat> so here i wish dan was here to, sh to share with us i really don't know too much about the details of what he's done here but i can certainly guess um it looks to me like he's so he's got his his ceramic fiberboard j in, on the inside here and you can see he's done a really nice job of building the surround around this and I got an email today from a customer who was asking about the 8 inch J and how it was going to interface with the outer this is a great example hopefully she's watching now and I sh should email her this actually because this is a great example but the core ends at this elevation that you can see where the riser mates back here so the core ends there and you are going to build up around with brick and then build in with this ceramic or with these uh, fire bricks splits for the liner. So Robin asks, would it work better to pull every other column out from the back of the bench an inch or two to provide support and airflow? Yeah, Robin, that's a great, great question and a great, uh, a great concept. Yes, I think it would. 
Um, I think if you'll see what Dan's doing here, he ends up with these, I believe they're stone backs. You can see them now on that bench over here where my mouse is pointing. And you can see these stone backs are beveled. And so my guess is that he was not concerned about creating a teeter-totter and levering these small um, stone bench covers off. So he probably put them all the way back there just for just to make things safe for um, for rocking and, and rolling there. But I, yes, Robin, you certainly could, so long as your you know tops were stable. Um, now you're looking at it. So let's uh, keep going with this, you guys. Um, so looking at this, he's got this big chamber here uh, that the core fits in, and the um, you know, he's got an empty space all around it. So essentially it's a, it's a, it's a bell, a lower bell, um, here. And this is really a really simple, basic rocket type build. Now the bench is gorgeous. Dan, you did an awesome job here. I just love it. Um, and you can see where his barrel is going to fit as well. Hey, Pablo, welcome. Glad to see you. So now he's got these top caps, and I think those are probably stone, but I can't tell at this point. I guess if we move through the pictures, we might see. They might be um, insulation underneath stone, but no, I think they're stone. So he's got the stone feed there and the barrel, and that's it. It's now coming together. So look at that. All those modular pieces packing together. and some lovely coverings, and we're done. How about that, you guys?